the lecture started out with a discussion of next generation users. These are people who have two important characteristics. First is they um, access the internet through multiple devices, tablets, uh, smartphones, as well as computers. And the second is that they access the internet um, in um, multiple locations. Um, these are, so they have a lot of ability to access the internet in a variety of ways. What makes them unusual is that they are people who tend to create a lot of content for the internet. They uh, create content at a rate of approximately 20 percentage points more than people who are not next generation users. Um, they don't do much uh, additional creation of, they don't do much more information searches than do ordinary users, but they're content creators. Over the past three years that we're able to measure them, the, they have increased from about 20% um, of British internet users to now about 45% of uh, British internet users. So we're seeing a sharp increase here um, in these people who are particularly sophisticated um, and well equipped to surf the internet in lots of locations in lots of ways. So that was the first part of my lecture. The second part was on the internet in Britain in general, um, and that's characterized by five trends. Uh, the first trend was the slow pace of diffusion of the internet. Basically, between 2009 and 2011, the internet grew by three per internet users grew by about three percentage points. They've now reached 73 percent of the British population. Uh, that puts Britain on par with places like Austria, uh, perhaps slightly below the median among uh, the uh, European Union nations. Then uh, we also see uh, a lot of persisting stratification in the internet. For example, age tends to be a major, play a major role in internet use, where young people use the internet a lot, old people use it relatively little at all. Um, in fact, young people are virtually 100% internet users, whereas people 75 and older are about 30%. So it's an extremely steep slope. Um, internet users are also um, stratified by income. Higher income people, uh, virtually all high income people use the internet. And by education. Um, interestingly, the gender divide, uh, has, which was nine percentage points eight years ago, has disappeared into the margin of error of the survey. There's basically no difference between male and female use. Uh, we are also seeing a slow increase in the use of government services. Basically, over the past two years, the use of e-government services has been flat um, in the internet, uh, among internet users. About 56%, I believe, of internet users use government services. The most striking change on the internet has been the rise in social networking sites. Um, four years ago, social networking sites were used by only about 20% of the British population. This year, uh, they're used by about 60%. So it's an enormous increase in a short time. The other news about that is where the recent increase is. As of 2009, two years ago in other words, there was Basically, about 90% of people under age 24 actually use the internet. And that has been stable for the past two years. All of the increases in the use of social networking sites have been in people age 25 to 55. In other words, that 30-year period where people are in uh, prime working years. And across that period, we're seeing 15 percentage point increases um, pretty stably. So social networking sites are no longer the province of pimply-faced adolescents anymore. They're actually now um, used by uh, mature people um, working daily jobs. With all of that, we're seeing persisting digital divides. Um, about 22%, 23% of the population no long, um, are, are non-users of the internet. Um, and about 5% of the population are former users of the internet. They're ex-users. Among the non-users, 
over half say they think they're better off without using the internet. And the major reason they give for not using the internet is things like they're not interested, it's not for me, it's not for people like me, questions like that. Among X users, the primary reason they give is because the internet is too expensive. So we're seeing a variety of things here uh, going on in the internet. Um, a combination of slowing overall diffusion um, with persisting stratification, um, but very sharp increases in some of the new technologies. I think that's a quick summary. And do you think, um, do you think these digital divides should be bridged? And if so, how should they be bridged? Well, that's an excellent question. <laughs> I think the digital divides probably should be bridged. There's an enormous amount of potential on the internet. It's extremely valuable. I think it's going to be very hard to bridge a lot of these divides. If you think, for example, of the statistic I gave a moment ago, um, that most people who are non-users say the reason they don't use the internet is there's nothing interesting there for them. You know, how, if they say it's not interesting, they say it's not for people like me, what's going to attract them to the internet? Um, now, in some of the theoretical work uh, we've done here at the OII, the internet seems to be what um, Bill Dutton calls an experience technology, meaning you don't really realize what you can do with it until you actually get there and do it and start to experience what's there. So there is some possibility if you show people the internet and what's possible that uh, you can get a, um, that more of them could be um, persuaded to use the internet. On the other hand, there, there are counter arguments. As people get older, their ability to type becomes less, their eyesight fades, it's harder for them to see uh, websites which are often written in disappointingly small type. <laughs> um, and um, so, you know, for many people it might start, it becomes much harder to use the internet even if they want to. Um, so there are balancing factors here, I think.